Hey guys, I'm Eric, I am Enigma Engineering, and a lot of my videos are really in-depth tutorials on how to install stuff. I'm a mechanical engineer, so I get pretty obsessive about things. In this video series, I'm just gonna go through and explain some of the stuff I'm doing on my MB Miata. It's gonna be more entertainment value than instructional. So crack a soda, sit back and enjoy. I pulled the valve cover off the Miata, and then I pulled all this stuff off the valve cover. I got a new PCV valve, and then I spray painted the whole thing with this high temp wrinkle paint. And before I spray painted it, I had to heat it up using a heat gun and I heated it up to around 175 to 200 degrees. Before that, the paint wasn't sticking, but now it looks pretty good and I'm happy to get this in the car. Originally, it looked okay. It was just really dirty and kind of beat up, scratched up. I think the red's really gonna look cool in the engine bay. And here's the engine bay. And this is a predominantly a track car, but I also bring it to car shows and cars and coffee, a lot of local cars and coffee. I'm in Milwaukee, so we don't have a lot of great months for cars, but when we do, we have a ton of events in the summertime. So when you go to those events, there are these huge networking events, and generally everybody has their hood popped, and you just talk about motors basically for two hours and meet a bunch of cool people. So I think it's gonna look really cool with the engine back in the car with that red valve cover and the turbo next to it. This is the bottom of the um, undercarriage or the, the subframe, and I had to repaint that. There was some paint flaking off, and I cleaned it up a little bit in here, but I didn't have to do too much. This car is from Tampa, Florida. It's so minty clean, and I got this right before Miata prices skyrocketed a couple of years ago. I got this thing for $4,000, and it had like 125,000 miles on it. I started this whole project off because I wanted to change my clutch, and I wanted to do a coolant reroute, and the coolant reroute goes right there. And I'll show you that in a second. And when I started to take all this stuff apart, I found a crack on my oil pump. And here's my oil pump, and there's the crack. And now there are a lot more cracks. This gear was so difficult to get off. It's really close to this oil pump. If you are doing your timing belt, don't even ever touch this unless this seal is like weeping oil. It's not even worth trying to get this gear off. Mine was nearly impossible. It wasn't because of anything up here. This was just corroded and it would not come off. And I ended up having to get a bunch of different chisels around the back side. You can't get a puller around it because it's too close to the oil pump. So I used chisels and just kept stepping up the side. And I was making sure that I was staying close to these um, thicker portions where I was certain that there was steel behind here. So I wasn't in these like open spaces where I'd, you know, maybe crack through and crack my block or something crazy like that. But I stepped up to bigger chisel sizes with an air hammer. And then once I got the gear to like here, I switched to this pointy style air hammer and was able to hit from the back side and the gear was able to pop off. But it was a very destructive way of getting that gear off and I highly recommend not doing that and just leaving this front seal if you do your tiny belt. I'll also be doing my water pump and here's my water pump right here, here's my old one. And I just replaced it a couple years ago but I got a new one so I'll throw it on there. Here's my pulley that goes on my crank for my accessory belts and I just painted it with some caliper paint. Just some. Heavy duty caliper paint, looks kind of cool. And here's the bolt that goes through there. I'm replacing basically every gasket on this system, new spark plugs, basically everything that I can get to that makes sense to replace when I have the engine out of the car. Here's my coolant reroute. I was buying some stuff off of some local guy on Craigslist years ago and he's like, hey, I got this coolant reroute, do you want it? And he just threw it in for like not a lot of money. At back at the time I was like, yeah, sure, I'll take it. I didn't realize that it's kind of hard to install because you can't see the backside of your engine. This is where the coolant reroute mounts and you have to get that gasket surfaced completely clean. I just decided that this is one of the things I could do when I had the engine out of the car. But I'm so glad I had this reroute because the Fly Miata one is really nice. These two top connections are for your, the coolant supply and return to your turbo. And the bottom one is your main coolant line that used to go to the front of here but no longer, so now that's gonna go to the back of, of the motor from, from the radiator. Here's my pile of parts. There's so much stuff. Half this stuff's not even going back on the car, so I'll, I'll have a weight savings at least when I get this thing turbocharged. This is the old radiator, and the guy that I got the stuff off of Craigslist, he had bought a Miata that was already done up with the flying Miata, I think stage one turbo, and it had this radiator too. So he threw this into the deal as well. So I took it at the time and I just, I've had these parts sitting in my house for years and it's time to, time to get turbocharged. 
Here's the Garrett 2560R, GT 2560R. And I have to test out this wastegate. So I have a pressure regulator and I don't have some expensive pressure regulator. I bought a $30 regulator off Amazon. I just did this for insurance. I wanna make sure the wastegate opens. I don't wanna over boost my car when I first start to do pulls on it. So I just wanna make sure this wastegate actuates at the pressure I think it is. Here's another bigger pile of parts, some more exhaust pieces, my downpipe, intercooler, intercooler piping, and then uh, the clutch flywheel and some more gaskets. I have all this stuff. I'm also gonna be using two catch cans. I also have these Innovate engine mounts that I'll be throwing on since I have the engine out of the car already. I just decided to do all the major stuff when the engine's out of the car. It should be as good as it can possibly get from my end when the, the motor goes back in. I got this silicone set up for a couple of hour, hours last night and then I tightened everything down to 19 foot pounds. I used all new grade eight hardware on this boundary oil pump and then I was able to get this seal this is a national seal. I picked it up at AutoZone. I ordered one that looked exactly like it. It looked dimensionally, it was almost exactly the same, but it just did not fit right in here. It didn't make a good seal. And for reference, there's like a little tiny gap here. The actual seal is a little bit farther back inside this oil pump. There's the pump and this is the mating surface where this oil baffle is gonna sit. And the pickup tube connects to here and it runs over here. I have the oil pan just draining oil right now. There's a little bit of oil left in there. And then here is that uh, baffle or gusset or whatever it's called. I just had this all cleaned up. I cleaned it all up with a Brillo pad and then I went over it with brake parts cleaner and just cleaned it a couple different times. My biggest concern is when I mount all this up, I don't want oil to drip down through here and mess up the silicone seal that I put down. I put this in too and I'm waiting for the silicone to set up right now. So these are just in there hand tight. I ordered these class 10.9 bolts off Amazon and this is the rear crank seal. And it fit pretty tight. I'm pretty happy with it. And I coated it with engine oil to get it to go on a little bit easier. Since I live in Wisconsin, it's time to go snow blow again. People ask me why I built this lift, and now you know why. It's like this six months of the year. For reference, I completely mangled my crank nose getting the gear off, and I mangled like this surface back here. Obviously, that's not good, but I wasn't gonna buy a new crank just because of that. When I had this all apart, I sanded it down, and I used JB Weld high temperature to fill in some of those big gouges, and then I sanded it like mirror finish. I went up to 3000 grit sandpaper and polished it as well and it felt really smooth. There aren't any rough ridges now and I think it'll create a pretty good seal. When I was doing that, I measured it with a caliper and I made sure that I didn't dimensionally change the diameter of it when I was finishing it. It never changed even to the hundredth decimal point. So I'm thinking that should be all right with this seal. The installation procedure says you should not use silicone on either side of this rubber gasket that sits here and it's one of the oil pan gaskets. And from everything I've read, and even the factory one, the OEM one that I took off had silicone on either side. I'm gonna use a little bit of silicone. But the theory is, if you use too much silicone, it will create like this little like pillow around it, and then it'll tend to like push out through the silicone. Honestly, that makes sense. But I think a little bit of silicone will just give it a little bit of help making a seal between this oil pump and the oil pan. Every time I do projects, I try new stuff that might make my life easier in the future, or maybe it'll make my life drastically worse. But I like to try new stuff. This is the crank gear, and I tapped, drilled and tapped these holes at 120 degrees from one another, and then I put these set screws in here. So this is M6 by 1.0. Here's the new Woodruff key. And I drilled this using my drill press. I would not try this, uh, the hand drill. So I'm pretty confident that they're they're, they're really vertical. I didn't want to mess up the uh, balance of this gear, and I also didn't want to reduce the strength of the gear, but I think this is a happy medium. This will allow me to get a puller on there. You look down here, each one of those bolts lines up. They're at 120 degree angles from one another. So I can use these big bolts, get this puller on here, right onto that crank snout, and then I can pull the gear directly off that shaft. I did this to help future me out. If I ever have to take this gear off and take that seal out again, or if I ever have to take my engine apart, take my oil pump off, and it will make it my life a lot easier. I mean, I, I know that's never gonna happen. This thing's just gonna run solid until it's, uh, 
until the end of time. So it'll be good. I redid this fitting. This is half inch MPT. And originally the threads were UNF, the ones that Kraken sent me, which are straight threads. So there's no way to make a seal here. At least this mechanically seals when you tighten it by itself. And then I used some liquid thread sealant. I torqued it to 30 foot pounds. And that's the main reason I wanted to do this. I wanted to make sure that it would mechanically deform some threads and seal under its own power. And then I'd give it some thread sealant to help it out. This is the ANF fitting that goes over the top of that. It just screws on like this. And one thing I wanted to avoid too, I wanted to avoid a situation where I didn't know how much this was torqued. So when I was tightening this up, I didn't want this to start like rotating because it would mess up the thread sealant after it dries. So I wanted to really know, you know, what's my torque spec on here. This is aluminum into aluminum, so it doesn't have to be super tight, but I don't think 30 foot pounds is going to back out under its own power. There's always a lot of concern with drilling this hole in your oil pan because you can hit the pickup tube that's on this side. But I think it's kind of interesting. That's, that's a big deal, obviously, but that happens when you're not driving your car. I think the bigger concern with this fitting is look how big it is and it's on your oil pan. If this comes out when you're driving or if it starts to leak, or something goes wrong, you're gonna lose your oil so fast that your engine is just gonna break. So I think that's the bigger concern, you know? How do I, how do I tighten this up and make it so it's a really good seal um, and, and focus on that and also focus on the fact that you don't wanna hit your pickup tube when you're, when you're drilling that hole. I'm using silicone RTB black. And a lot of people use gray, but I think they're pretty similar and I use black because it literally has a picture of an oil pan on it. So it must be good or at least not terrible for this application. Put in this little gasket here. These Torx style bolts you have to tighten to 19 or 90 inch pounds and then here's the pickup tube that's all tight. I had to make my own gasket for this. I just cut it with an X-Acto knife. It looked pretty good. I used Felpro gasket paper. It was a hard gasket to find and there's none available locally. I added a little more silicone on top of this gusset or this, this pan and now I'm gonna put this on top of that. Just making these finger tight and for me that just means I'm tightening it with this thing with my hand. And the point of this is you want the silicone to still have like a little bit of room to give once you tighten everything down and you, and you torque it to spec after the silicone starts to set up, like an hour from, from now. Here's the oil pump back on. Oil pan is torqued, everything's back on. Here's that rear, that rear crank seal. Then I put the nose on. Here's the new water pump. Looks pretty shiny. Unfortunately, all this stuff gets covered up, but it looks so awesome. Here's that sweet baby timed. Oh yeah. I put all the covers back on. I added these timing marks on this pulley. And then I'm just throwing some of this stuff on to see how it looks and making sure all these brackets work. And I put this CAS back down here. And then I threw the cover on. I'm really happy with how this looks. The color is almost so bright that it's hard to take pictures of it. Not a bad problem to have though. Here's the coolant reroute. This sensor broke when I took the engine out, so I rewired it up. I got this connector off eBay. Here's the reroute. 